Hey, good afternoon. I know for all of you sticklers for time and, you know, I apologize. It's an hour late. Um, your boy's been a little excited for the last few days and um, I may have, may not have taken a little nap. So please forgive me. So welcome. To your afternoon drive with Big L. What's going on, Pete? Glad you guys could make it. And obviously, hey, Kellen, what's going on? Y'all can forgive me. Y'all can forgive somebody for being a little openly and overly celebratory for the last few days. Joseph, what's going on? How am I feeling today? (sighs) Overly... Overly, oh yeah, I, I did, I did, I've been doing a little bit, a little bit. Um, I'll get to us in a minute. Late show. Yeah. It's not about celebratory, you know, it's, it's not about participation trophies. It's about bringing home that dub. It's about bringing home hardware. So, for all my LA and SoCal and Laker fans... It's not about selfies, uh, Clipper Squad. Oh, I'm still pumped too. I'm I'm so pumped. Um, and for those of y'all that um don't know about a lot of these sites that handle raffles, um, after our win Sunday, um, well, no, actually, I won it Friday. These showed up today. I won these in a raffle. So see, that's what's popping too. Um, but moving on. Ray, what's going on? What's happening? Our uh, something else happened on uh, Sunday. We won. Now I don't pull out my baby all the time, but we won. So it's time to pull out the real hardware. That's right. Yeah. Ain't she pretty? Yes, Jessica. Antoine was cracking. Oh. And. Just so you know, you can't steal it. You can imitate it, but you can't duplicate it. Because this is the other side. Oh, yeah. So... Uh huh. Hey, Raider Ed Red, how you doing, darling? Ain't that pretty? And it may be five o'clock here, but it's a uh, drink thirty here. And yeah, that's filled to the top with go go juice. Um, I'm gonna put that down for a minute, cause uh. This is what's been in it. And I don't know if y'all see. Yeah, that's tequila. With a slight splash of juice. And yes, Stephen Lee. Stephen Lee, I don't know if that's you, Spleef. But yes, let me go ahead and get on to what y'all here for. I mean, I'm sure we have all been partying excessively. And getting in our trash talking groups and... Talking mass shit to KC fans. I know I have. And as they've talked shit, I've brought up their shitty history with players of questionable character. Yeah. They're still real sensitive about the dude that uh, killed his girlfriend and then killed himself in the parking lot. That's a good one to pepper them with when they decide to really try to get ignorant. I also pepper them with... um, yeah, y'all been relevant for five years, so settle down because in 45 other years of getting y'all's asses beat 
to death. Yeah. Y'all new fans? Yeah, y'all don't remember them 45 other years where y'all sucked ass. Y'all didn't come out of the woodwork until y'all started winning more than half your games. So calm the fuck down. Y'all don't have a history that you remember because y'all's history is horrible. Just like Patriot fans. They only remember the last 20 years. They don't remember the previous 40. So, yeah, that's fun doing doing what it do. But anyway, y'all, yeah. Um, or they're, oh, the la they, they talk about the last seven years. What about the last 43? We beat y'all's ass. Y'all still little brother. So, you know, but the game. I mean, we we all have a special place for car haters. And even the car haters are being bitches. Because what the car haters are doing is, I'm not going to give him his credit yet. We didn't give a fuck if you give him credit at all. Y'all the ones looking stupid. Well, Because now, now, remember, it's gone from replace him to... He's not good enough to, okay, well, what about, because these are the same motherfuckers that all week, last week, it was, we're going to lose. Um, the one asshole on the page was um, Chiefs by 11. It was, and, and now the car haters are just as bad as Queef fans, which, because it's like, but, or I'm going to hold out excitement. He needs to get a playoff win. That's a signature win. That's a feather in that man's cap. That's a feather in our cap as Raiders fans. As he goes, we go. So what the fuck are you holding out for? Yes, putting in Mariota. The motherfucker's not on the active roster, but you want to put him in. How the fuck are you claiming to be a Raider fan and you're not even keeping up with the active roster? What's cracking? What's crack a lacking, Chris Montiel? You Dodger hater, you. For you and your Redbirds, or should I say the Red Flow. Um, you know, and then, but hey, Kellen, I'm not going to call anybody out. My homeboy was a little pouting, but he wasn't pouting as much as his trout mouth ass uh, fiance. Because... Even the Chiefs fans got it, went after her when she said that the refs were cheating. You know, and that's the thing. I mean, I'd say a good third of the traffic on our page was us as admins and some of you who are true loyal Raider fans getting on supposed Raider fans for throwing shade at our own fucking team. How do you call yourself a fan bitching about the team? There's a difference between being critical. Y'all were bitching before the game even got played. And then the rest of y'all, that the same kind of motherfuckers was bitching after the first quarter. Didn't even wait for the rest of the game to unfold. I don't get it. Well, I do get it. It's a sign of bitch. Aggressive bitch. Overreactive bitch. Lack of football knowledge bitch. Because he threw his first pick. Okay. Go back in football history and you tell me another starter that went the entire season without throwing one. Um, fuck y'all. Because <laughs> guess who else threw their first pick of the season last week? Patrick Mahomes. Ah! That's what got me laughing. He did the same shit. Y'all didn't even mention that. Y'all just crawled in your shells, crawled back in your shells and closed them. Because you looked like a fucking moron. By the end of the game, crickets. And those of you with nuts snuck out of them just long enough to say, I'm not going to give him credit yet. 
anybody that had us going into the bye undefeated needed a serious, serious gut check. Um, we could have been four and one, but we are three and two. We have a running record, and we've beaten two playoff teams. Yes, and I wanted Heath to run that all the way back, too. And I'm like, um, Gunther, I look at it like our D did what it do. Our D did what it do. Um, Stay of execution style. (laughs) And, hey, John, I'm just, like, for me, y'all, if this gets that fire lit under Gunther or, you know, the combination of Gunther Marinelli, because I look at it like this here. If one of them goes, they're both going. Because you can't tell me that um, if you had anything to do with this defense and that defense doesn't improve this year, Anybody involved with organizing the way that defense plays this year is going to go. You're not going to get rid of Mar- of Gunther and keep Marinelli. Marinelli probably had a decent amount of say in how this defense played this year. He gone. Just period. He gone. And... More fuckery. And I'll get back to the game. Y'all stop. Don't put another fucking thing on this page about Matt Ryan, Haskins, or any other potential dumpster fire ass quarterback and the Raiders being a potential landing spot. We have our has-been backup. We don't need anyone else. We have our quarterback. We don't need anyone else. For you idiots that talk about Matt Ryan coming here. This motherfucker's had Julio Jones, Ridley for the last three years. He has gone to the Super Bowl With Julio Jones and Tony Gonzalez, he's had a complete, complete receiving core and couldn't do jack shit with it. What do we need him for? Derek Carr has a stronger arm. He's more mobile than everybody you're talking about bringing here. And Haskins, come on. He's bordering on the atomic bomb of quarterback busts. (laughs) <laughs> so, I mean, he'll never get to Heath Shuler level quarterback bust, but no, stop, quit playing. Unless Derek Carr gets his leg put on backwards, he ain't going nowhere. He's our quarterback. And speaking of legs put on backwards, the only reason why Derek Carr's injury wasn't as graphic as Dak Prescott's is because Carr's happened higher up in his leg. But he had a compound fracture of his leg. It was the same injury that Dak has. So, you think Dak's going to come back next year and be balling out of control? It's a compound fracture and a dislocated ankle. Dak's never going to be the same. Cars recovering It took him three years to get confidence in that leg again. That's Dak's plant foot. He's not going to be able to throw the football the way he's thrown it before. Because it's his plant foot. Good luck to him. Oh, dude, Chris, I don't know if you remember Heath Shuler. Jamarcus played for, what, four years? Heath Shuler played two. He got benched. He sure was out of football by his third year. 
That's how bad he was. And he was the number one overall pick. And that was back in the day when the number one overall pick was getting, you know, 150 million guaranteed bread. They were having to buy the farm to get the number one pick signed. And he, you know, combination of him and Sam Bradford are why the, there's a rookie salary cap now. Because teams were getting fleeced and veterans were getting completely fucked over and getting bitch contracts. Because teams were completely investing a mil- these millions upon millions in unproven entities. You know, Sam Bradford came into the league with arthritis. But in order to sign him, they had to pay him, you know, a third of their fucking salary cap. So, yeah, and that, and so that that's what's real. But as far as we go, let me go back to us. The offense. As much as we were pissed at him, as much as we hated it, as much as we were like, get rid of him, trade him. He, you know, even I said he's trade bait. Trent Brown proved. Why he got paid, he proved he's worth every penny he got paid. Because my question is, what that line do all day Sunday, except Colton Miller's illegal motion dumb shit. That line turned into the fucking bullies they are. All it took was Trent coming back and putting everybody back in their right positions. Didn't shit come off Derek's front. Nothing. And where was all of our running successfully until we started beating the death out of them with the pass? They ran behind Trent. Majority of Josh's yards came off the right side following right up Trent's ass. Trent, Jackson, and Hudson, I'll put that right side up against anybody in the NFL, and nine times out of ten, we're going to win that fight. Any defense, any offensive line, when Trent's right, when Jackson's right, and when Hudson's right, and right now, they're all right. And we're getting a fresh Trent. Because now, even if, you know, that was his first that was his first game. He's only got to play three quarters of a season. So, yeah. Our issue is left tackle now because we're getting Richie back and if Richie is still you know if that Achilles ain't right Denzel Good has proven oh he's ready to take over so because of the injuries this season on the line because of Trent Brown's injury we've discovered Denzel Good has gone from being a third string backup everywhere to being our Swiss Army Knife backup who is going to be a starter if Richie hangs it up because Denzel is good enough to start now. The unfortunate aspect of that is we're going to have to break him off a little cheddar this offseason. To keep him here. The other good part of that is. We know he can play tackle. Which means. We don't have to pay Colton Miller. (laughs) We can. Increase his salary. And move him to tackle. Decrease Colton's. And bring his big ass into guard. Where I think he'll strive. Because he'll no longer have to worry about moving and getting beat off his end 
which he is very good at doing. So, the offensive line, Trent Brown, healthy as hell. I'm happy as hell, you know, with that. And then, well, yeah, it's easier to open the passing game when your quarterback has time to throw the ball. For everybody that, oh, all he does is check down. Well, when all you have time to do is give a quick glance, hell, half the time Carr didn't have time. And when he did have time, our, t- our receivers are hurt. All we got back was the one receiver that we had that knew the playbook well enough to take the top off the defense. And what happened? He took the top off the defense. And we became a vertical offense. Because whenever they didn't double rugs, and even a couple of times when they tried to, Henry Ruggs outran the double coverage. Period. And like on the play, y'all, we all know Renfro's not fast. How do he get 20 yards downfield wide open? Because the top got taken off the defense and he ended up hovering around in their blown zone coverage. Look familiar? Because that's what happens to us all the time. KC's defense sucks. They have two rush ins. Or they have a rush in and a blitz package. That's it. We got Trent back, and their rush in became obsolete. Carr had time. Give the man time, he'll pick you apart. That's the beautiful thing. My man Tommy Beard was cracking. He, We have our quarterback. What we didn't have was tools for him to play with. What we haven't had for three years was an offensive line. Healthy. There was always somebody nicked up. Remember, we saw what was what was a big problem with our offensive line in the first quarter Sunday. He just happened to be wearing the color red. Kalechi Osimile. Remember, our high-priced offensive guard? That man blew both tendons out in his left and right knee, just reaching to touch Hankins. He blew out both tendons in his left and right knee. Kelechi was our problem for two years because he had bad knees. We traded our problem to the Jets, who then he didn't play for them but for three weeks. And then he was on the trash heap. Kansas City took him off the trash heap. And for, what, three weeks, he was okay. Because they picked him up, what? After week one, he was okay for three weeks. Come up against us. Nobody touched him. Nobody touched him. Blew knee tendons out. In both knees. Just run it. Our present to Kansas City, two years in the making. You're welcome. <laughs> So there you have it. For all of y'all, oh, we've always had an offensive line. No, we haven't. (laughs) After Kelechi's Pro Bowl year, that's what he he was turning into. And we got rid of him and got a couple of picks out of it at the same time. You know? And, nah, Amari Cooper wasn't his go-to player. He had lost all his confidence in him because he was dropping the ball. Still leads the league in drops. He's led the league in drops for four years. And even in, I don't know if you saw the interview, Cooper admitted that he half-assed played when he was with us because he didn't like how he wasn't targeted enough. He admitted that he half-assed played. So how the hell can a quarterback have confidence in somebody that don't do shit? So when he got to Dallas, yeah, he started playing again. Amari Cooper admittedly didn't play the same with the same vigor after his rookie year. Because he didn't like the offensive game plan. Because he's a me person. So 
No, nah, he wasn't. He wasn't dependable here. So no, they didn't trade away his weapon. His weapon wasn't a weapon because he wasn't dependable, and he admitted he wasn't admittable, uh, dependable. So fuck him. And now Dallas is paying him, and C.D. Lamb is out pay, playing him. So fuck him. Period. You know, he's a sensitive bitch. You want to be sensitive, Dallas is the best place for you. Because Breaking Backs is their specialty. They got their own movie to prove it. And then, you know, the biggest game changer, Max brought it. Cleveland Farrell brought it, which is what they've been doing all season. And everybody wants to, was always, oh, oh, Mahomes, is, Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, you watch every game. He gets credit, which he deserves, because he's, I mean, nobody ever points out the elephant in the room that Kansas City's offensive line sucks, absolutely sucks. Patrick Mahomes is back there running for his life. Yeah, they have design rollouts. Those design rollouts aren't to accent his athletic ability. Those those rollouts are to protect the offensive line because they're not good. And the reality was we had the horses on our defensive line because we couldn't get tired. Because we had Nassib coming off the end until he hurt his toe. But then we came, Hankins brought it, and whoever dude is, I can't remember his name, number 93 that got called up off the practice squad. Yeah, he's. I think he's earned himself a spot on the 53. Um, when Hurst comes off the COVID list, I'm figuring – we may be a, a DB or a linebacker short because my man stayed up Mahomes' ass the whole game. And their running game was non-existent because of the way the defensive line played. You know, we had linebackers. Again, another thing that we got back at full and total capacity because now he's 100% healthy Kawakowski Kawakowski was back um I don't know see Littleton Littleton was irritating a little bit I mean the thing for me I just covered that uh, Fabian Kalechi Osimile has been a mediocre offensive guard for the last two years. Well, he hasn't really played the last two years. And the reason why is because we got rid of him because he was injury prone. His knees have been done for two years. And I think like last year, what was it? It wasn't even his knee. Last year, I think it was like his neck or his shoulder or something that he parlayed a whole season salary out of the Jets. He filed a grievance because they were weren't letting him get the surgery or whatever, and they finally let him do it. And he weaseled his way out of playing last year. And I still think it was because his knees were done and he knew it. And his career's over. He ain't coming back from two busted knees. No contact. They're going to do surgery to make sure that a man can walk again until he can get his knees replaced when he's like in his late 40s, early 50s. But he's done. And that's the thing. One of the things about Littleton that showed out when he was with the Rams was he could cover Kelsey by himself. He could. He was a. Cover, he's a covering machine. I'm concerned with 
the potential that he may have gotten his bread. And so he kind of laxed off of his work ethic because Kelsey, Kelsey burned him twice. But then again, think about it. There were two big, the two big plays Kelsey had, he burned him, but then he was shut down the rest of the game. So I think the isolation of Littleton getting burned may have hyped him up because Kelsey didn't see the ball the rest of the game. If you think about it. So I don't know if there was a scheme change or Littleton got embarrassed and, and didn't, you know, stepped his game up. But until the last four minutes of the game, our defense shut them out the second half. Something else that goes, that gets, you know. We don't necessarily, and Charles Davis is a Kansas City apologist, ball sucker, ball licker. Dude's a bitch. We had the ball, we're driving, and he's, well, Patrick Mahomes, motherfucker, don't give a fuck about that bitch. Big ass alien headed baby motherfucker. I don't, look. All these motherfuckers that said we was going to lose. Rich Eisen was the only one that said it's not an overreaction to think that we can win our division. The next day, he's the only one that said it because he's the only one that had our back at the beginning of the season. So. That's my thing. Who runs the dark side page? We all do. There's a whole group of admins, and a lot of them are in here. Raider at Red, Nancy, Chris, myself, we all run that page. The Commish, Raider Spleeve, we're all admins on that page. Uh, And now here comes this bullshit if we still had Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack is why we have other players. Fuck Khalil Mack. Him and his agent gave us five total players. Fuck him. Thank thank God we don't have Khalil Mack because we have five players instead of him. Fuck him. Wish y'all could get his dick out of your mouth. <laughs> like, man. But if it's any consolation for all of you motherfuckers that just can't let go of his ass, he'll be back after he gets finished paying a season's worth of taxes that he would have had if he had just stayed here. He'll be back. But he ain't going to get the money that he would have had if he would have stayed because his stock's gone down since he's going to be five years older. And the thing is, he may not come back because we don't need him anymore. Be nice. But by the time he gets back, we may just have people that are the combination, one of them, Cleveland Farrell, who we benefited. You know, one of them, Max Crosby, we've benefited. Nassib, he'll still be here. You know, Abram, he helps cover up some of the shit that that, that's a direct benefit. Josh Jacobs, that's a direct benefit. So you want to get rid of, you know, three of the plugs that we got and then get back back? Or do you want to get his dick out of your mouth and be thankful for what the fuck we do have? I mean, come on. Me and Anthony Mac, man, that was three years ago. Yeah. And that's another reason, because now he's getting he's getting the executive treatment. Max is starting to pull double teams and it's freeing everybody else on the lineup. And the difference is, instead of racing around double teams and opening up big ass holes for the draw play to go through, Max powers through them. He throws off one and bullies the other one. So he stays in his lane. 
which is more effective because it crushes the pocket. And with the push you get from, um, well, when Mo is in there, but Hankins is doing the damn thing. And Malik Collin, I mean, uh, you can't trust no fucking broke back cast off. But again, that was indirect, I'm sure, a direct contribution from Marinelli being added to the coaching staff that Malik Collins got here. So if we can attribute that to him, our defense don't improve. Back, package up all them motherfuckers and send them somewhere. As far as I'm concerned, because that's right now he could fall into the Tyrell Williams grab bag, wearing a mask to come in there on Monday and steal money because he's really hasn't done shit for us yet. I mean, we can thank him for lighting a lighting a very competitive fire under Mo Herseth. Because Mo is showing out like he has, damn. I mean, the leap off the page from what he was last year to this year. Hey, Miss Leslie. So, yeah, the people talking about Mac are probably the same people hating on Carr. Well, what if we stop it? We only have enough money to pay one quarterback. You see how lovely uh, Chicago's situation is. They're not 4-1 because of the quarterback play. By far. They're 4-1 because Tom Brady doesn't know how to count. <clears throat> and Nick Foles is Tom Brady's daddy. I don't give a fuck. Let him retire as a bear. I don't give a fuck. He's not a Raider. And I'm going to fuck with whoever brings the bitch up in here. He ain't a Raider, so why give a fuck? Because of him, we ended up with five total players. Could give a rat's ass about Callum Mick. You know, I mean, they will end up eventually in third place in their division and not making the playoffs. We will be in second or first. If we win our division, we'll get a bye. Otherwise, we'll be in the playoffs and we'll go two rounds deep. That's my prediction. Because I honestly think that can't that not us, as y'all might not like this one, but if you're a football fan and you know what you're talking about, you're going to appreciate this. Bill Belichick gave us the blueprint on how to beat Kansas City the week before we played them. They just didn't have Cam Newton at quarterback or they would have won that game by two touchdowns. Bottom line. Um... What do I think about us taking Farrell ahead of Josh Allen? We already had a quarterback. We didn't need Josh Allen. That's what I think about it. We needed Farrell. And Farrell's balling. That's what I think. I think we did exactly what we needed to do. And it's paying off for us. And it's paying off for Buffalo. So, that's what I'm saying. And yeah, it's a copycat league. I mean, if it worked for one, I mean, how all of a sudden did you, I mean, Mahomes and um, what's-his-face in Baltimore showed out. Because remember, when Mahomes started um, acting a fool, then the next thing you know, Baltimore put Lamar Jackson in and Deshaun, well, no, Deshaun Watson was showing out first. And then Kansas City put in Mahomes. And all Mahomes was, was a more athletic version of Alex Smith, 
who was there already. And then Smith got traded to Washington and we all know what happened to him, you know, and I was mad happy to see Alex Smith back on the field Sunday. I was scared for his life because, you know, you talk about bad offensive lines, that thing out there that they're putting out there in Washington is going to get anybody killed. You know, Superman couldn't play behind that line, but you know, real talk. The next thing, first Deshaun Watson was out there running around for his life, but making plays. Then Mahomes got out there, and Mahomes was off the charts. Then uh, from Watson and Mahomes, then Baltimore put Lamar Jackson out there. That ended Joe Flacco's career in Baltimore. Russell Wilson was out there. Well, Russell Wilson was out there before all of them. And gradually, and then everybody needed to have the mobile quarterback. But the best one out of them was the, I mean, Mahomes had the best arm. Russell has the best technique. Russell has the best football acumen. And that proves it because he has the least and has done the most. And then our one-two backfield, yes, Clint, Spank, you got it. I love the fact that Devontae Booker ended up in our backfield. You know, because that one-two punch, who would have thought Devontae Booker in our backfield would have cured the problem? I loved that. You know, and it's at, and it's, yeah. Uh, Carlos, you're young. You're very young. No, he wasn't. He wasn't nowhere near the first running quarterback. The first one of notoriety during my lifetime that was decent was uh, Fran Tarkington. So we talking 30 years before or 20 years before Warren Moon. And then there was this other dude um, that was known for his running. Oh, what was his name? Ken Stabler? Yeah. He was a running quarterback before he hurt his leg. And he was still a running quarterback after he hurt his leg. He was a scrambler. That's why his nickname is The Snake. Get the fuck out of here. I love Warren Moon, too, but far from the first running quarterback. Um, yeah. Russell was a rookie when they realized that uh, they messed up with Flynn. And then, remember, Flynn ended up down here with us. We made the mistake. That was another Raleigh McKenzie. What the fuck? Matt Flynn ended up with us before we drafted Derek Carr. Yeah. Well, Randall. Randall. And just think, Randall went to UNLV. (laughs) Well, what's going on, my man? And, and you know that that that's the whole thing about everything, man. We all got to get get it in the way we do it, you know. So it, it, it's a beautiful thing. All of this is just it's been a great a great weekend, a great week. Um, I know on the East Coast, if you, I mean. I know the Orlando area and that traffic, now that the state's pretty much open all the way up again, I know that traffic is ignorant. I know in Miami, but, you know, they're mullet fans. You know, it's mullets, mud skippers, <laughs> you know, swamp monsters. I don't know. Um, y'all are, if you ain't home, I hope you're close. Midwest. Just holding it down, getting to the spot, or just getting off, getting in that traffic. I hope y'all have a good drive home, or if you're at home, crack one open, because you see I got a glass full of my entertainment Um, out west. Y'all got two more, two more to go. But this your man, Big L. Sorry about the delay Thursday. Y'all will see me at the right time, the right Raider time, the right Raider channel. You know, don't forget, it's Tuesday. Catch up to the commish with the report tonight, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. 
Go Dodgers. Yes, Miss Leslie, it was a great, 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 great Raider game. We in the bye week this week. So we come out against the Suckineers, and that is the week that your boy Big L will be Vegas bound. I'll be in Vegas for that game. So love y'all. Whatever y'all do, be as safe as you can. But always keep it 1,000% Raider. So, y'all know how we do it here. Raider Reaction. And shout out to all those booster clubs out there. Orlando Raider Nation. Y'all know I miss y'all. But I'm going to be back soon. It's all about that peace. We got love for every single one of y'all. And thank y'all for tuning in and letting us do this. We love Love, love doing this for y'all. And last but not least, it's all about these motherfucking writers. Later.